All right. You know our interviews. We're pretty informal. Hey, buddy. It's good to see you yeah, again. Yeah, he's back. All right. <laughs> so, John from Skillet and Fight the Fury now. We yeah. have not caught you since starting the new project. Mm. And we were just discussing it's been five years yeah, since our last that. interview. And this is interview number five for Skillet. So that's pretty creepy, right? That's like ancient alien stuff, you know, <laughs> something in the pyramids there, probably. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, our interviews were pretty informal. We like to have fun. Yeah. So let's uh, get into it here. So Fight the Fury just started back in the fall. Yeah. And you've also got Jen doing her own thing mm -hmm. with Ledger. One of the questions I, I took to Facebook and everything on our page and said, hey, we're interviewing Skillet. What do you want to ask? And so I'll probably get the phone up because there's some good stuff in here on our page <laughs> that I want to ask. But There better be <laughs> all these people out here. Exactly. But I know one of them that came up a lot is Skillet's on this three or four year rotation with an album and it's year three. Yeah. What's coming up? Skillet record this summer. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Just listen to mixes today as we speak. Nice. Got a few more, uh, you know, nitpicking, I guess, you know, right. with the mixes, but they're almost done. Uh, record will be done any day now. Uh, released uh, this summer. This so summer. we got a single coming in May. Okay. And uh, I hope it's good. <laughs> just kidding. You know, sometimes when you work on a record for a long time, you, you do get kind of like, you're like, okay, I thought this was good a year ago, and I hope right. it's still good. But um, it's unnerving, especially when you wait for, uh, as you said, three years. Yeah. But the longer you wait, the more epic it has to be. Yeah. You know, like waiting for a sequel. Oh, exactly. You know what I mean? So, uh, but I think the record, uh, I'm very excited about the record. It's, uh, it's good. Um, me and Corey produced the bulk of it this time, which is the first Skillet record we've produced produce the bulk of mm -hmm. in a long long time okay so that's pretty exciting for us yeah yeah and this is skillet album number i think it's 10 i was adding it up <laughs> earlier like for, for actual studio records i'm like yeah that makes that makes 10 i wanted to do a quiz for you but i think i just asked the question is if you if a fan picked any song off of any album would you be able to perform it or at least oh. <laughs> recognize it i mean in song uh, name the and album? latter yes i could recognize <laughs> it no I, I couldn't perform it i could probably perform it a little better than most of the band only because i've got a really good memory but some of them we've never performed right you know it's uh which sounds silly it's just uh you you put out so much music these yeah. days you know and, and after a while it's like you've only got an hour, hour and a half, two hours if you're headlining a really long set to play. So you end up not playing a whole bunch of songs. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it is pretty difficult when it comes time to tour. Like, okay, I've got now we're going to be on ten albums. Yeah, <laughs> which ones do we pick? You know? It is because there are some songs that I'm that that I'm, that, that I'm selfish about. You know, and I'm like. That. That'd be really fun to play. It's got a cool bass line or yeah. something, you know. So if everybody's gonna get selfish about it, like I love that because it's got got a great guitar solo I get to play, and then you're not really doing it for the fans, you know. Right. You're kind of doing it for yourself. Not that there's anything wrong with choosing a song or two that is, this is this is for us because it's fun. Yeah. Now I will say, some songs are just great live songs. Uh, right. It doesn't mean they have to be radio hits, you know. I mean, mm -hmm. typically you got to play. You got to play radio songs yeah, if you've yeah. got them. Yep. Um, but it's not like Skillet has an hour and a half worth of radio hits. But we don't have that many um, hits. But we have songs that we know the fans love. We have yeah. a very good idea of what the bulk of the fans like. So we'll try to throw in a couple of songs that are selfish, and, and then mainly just make 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 the audience happy. Yeah. Is there one recurring song that you hear fans like saying, "Oh, I wish they would have played that tonight" or something? Um. Not really. Probably because I'm always like, you know, like if we didn't play Monster yeah. or Hero, you know, I think fans would be like, what the heck is going on? <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much know what people are like. If you don't play it, we're going to be, you know, PO'd. So I play those songs. But but there there are some songs um, that, that you release a record that will have, begin to have a life of its own. In fact, yeah. on our last record... There was a song like that called The Resistance, right. um, which ended up being a radio single, but it wasn't one that the label thought would be a single. It almost didn't even make the record. And we, we released it, and immediately we saw on social media the, that I was like, oh my gosh, this might be the, the, the fan favorite on the record. Right. <clears throat> and it's the last song on the album. We never thought it would be a radio single. We started playing it live, and I think it was the, um, it was the excitement of the fans uh, live. Yeah. That convinced the label to release it as a single so all the fans matter we're right exactly. they, they matter you know 
and it's I'm sure it's got to be difficult when you have that song list and it's like okay what order do we put them on in the album <laughs> do you get a say in that or uh, we know it's a lot of record labels that kind of help with that but do you mm-hmm. get a big say in that oh yeah yeah to be honest my labels never once involve themselves in my concerts in in any way Good. never one time yeah that's my thing um and that to tell you the truth that is kind of one of my favorite things about yeah. i mean i like recording and I do like writing. I'm not saying I don't. I like writing, but there's a certain stress that comes with that writing because you're you're putting something out there that you believe or that you feel. You know, I want to yeah. write a song about my wife. Right. I feel this. And, and, and then people are like, uh, I don't really like it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're the label or, or whoever. They're like, I don't really like that lyric. Maybe you say this. And, and you're like, oh, but that's not what I wanted to say. Right. I wanted to say this. It was a story to me. And, exactly. And it was personal. All of that work goes into make for the two or three years will go into making a record that you hope people like. Then the fun part to me is performing it. Performing is mm-hmm. is for me what it's all about because you get to see the fans, you get to see them sing the songs, and you get a sense of what this song meant to someone. Right. So uh, doing that in order for a concert with some ebb and flow, yeah, some dynamics of it's it's big, it's small, it's emotional. That's my favorite thing. That doesn't feel like work to me. That feels like fun. Good, good. The big songs such as Monster and Hero, mm-hmm. do you prefer them now as they've been out and fans, like everybody will sing to them or as they were first <laughs> released right. and you actually get to see, you know, what they think of them? That's a great question. Really, that's, uh, I, I've never been asked that. Um, yes. <laughs> come on. We're doing something right. Because we're on backstage <laughs> pass here. Yeah. Um, um, I would probably say... There is an excitement when the fans know a song that, right. that's different. Even when you're releasing, in fact, we're playing a new song tonight. Okay. Brand new song. There's a real, like, unnerve, <laughs> unnerve <laughs> feeling because you just don't know if you're going to embarrass yourself. Right. You know, I mean, now I'm usually like, screw it. I love the song. I'm going to yeah, play it. And yeah. they might hate it. But at whatever point you realize, oh man, people are really liking this and they begin to sing the song, then it's, it's pretty fun. Yeah. You hear some people say like, you get bored of playing old songs. Uh, I don't get bored of playing old songs if people like them. I mean, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. Well, right. I don't think I could be you two and, and be bored at, right. at twenty, forty thousand people singing my songs. <laughs> right. But that's just me. I don't know. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's like uh, uh, rich, rich people problems. All right, yeah. <laughs> that's your first world problem. Right? right. All right. I mentioned we had some fans ask some stuff on our Facebook page too, and I want to get into these because they like shout outs too. You know, they they, 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 right. Can they you comment say hi to my on sister, stuff. Yeah. My sister Jean. Hi Jean. Yeah. So. I mean, oh, hygiene. 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 That wasn't hygiene. planned. Just <laughs> hygiene is good, people. All right. All right. So that was me scrubbing my armpits. There you go. As if I had a soap. So in case they didn't know, that wasn't we're just like uh, like itching. Yep. It was washing. I do remember because I one of our fans interacts quite a bit too. So he really wanted a, a shout out as well. Okay. So his name is Kenny Dresden. Kenny! Kenny. So, ask John if he remembers letting a dude sing a part of Those Nights at Burlington Steamboat Days in Burlington, Iowa. That dude would be me. <laughs> well, I remember Steamboat Days. Yeah. It was specifically because um, I'd never been there. And right. it, it, frankly, it's just kind of a cool name. You, you know, it's, it's interesting. It's like a... And it was very much like that town and that local yeah. thing. So, right. I don't recall specifically you singing it. But I do usually let someone sing it. So I do remember the event, and I remember it was really hot, really humid. Yep, yep. Really okay. humid. Okay. So we gave Kenny a shout out there. I mean, you guys have always been good to us. Like I said, interview number five, it probably is topping our top two, three bands of how many times we've interviewed. There's only a few others that we've oh. interviewed this many times. Partly awesome. because we want to. And good. <laughs> so, I want to, too. Well, good, good. <laughs> Hopefully this doesn't get too crazy for And now we're number six, but, but not in five years. Right, right. We like in like you. six months yeah, or a year. Exactly, exactly. We'll make, it, we'll make it so. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll be a more of a recurrence because, man, <laughs> the fans always ask for these interviews. So That's great. Appreciate your time. Check out Fight the Fury. Check out Skillet. John Cooper. Check them out, guys. Hey, everyone. Thank you for watching our video. Subscribe to us on YouTube to see all of our interviews and backstage footage. Also, find us on our other socials by searching at BSE Rocks or by clicking the links below in the video. By becoming a fan of Backstage Entertainment, you can enter in contests to win autographed prizes. From Backstage Entertainment, I'm Jeremy LaFrance.
All right, you are recording now. Okay. I like taking stuff out of my pocket. I don't like stuff in my pocket. So yeah, you sit just... down, it's all bulky. Oh, I know. And stabs your leg. Phones Key anymore. Leg. Phones anymore. Tablets, so. Yeah, they're huge. Yeah, right. <laughs>